Hello gamers, Pet here. It's that time of the year, January. That means we are going to have a video where we are going to look at 2013 in retrospective. I'm going to start with the things that I don't really like to talk about, you know, the negative things. So I'm going to talk about the biggest disappointments and actually it's only one game. One game that disappointed me and that one is SimCity. Well, there are, disappointment is kind of a subjective thing because it's about you. You are disappointed because you were expecting something and uh, that game didn't deliver it according to your expectations, right? Sometimes it's not the game's fault and sometimes it is. Sometimes the game is try trying to sell you way too many things and he fails to deliver, so you're disappointed. The thing with SimCity is that not only that it disappointed a lot of people, but the game actually sucked. It sucked so much. I still remember last year uh, watching their website where they had like a full page of awards, like most promising game, upcoming game, best game according to PC Gamer. This is what's making me so mad. <laughs> it's making me so mad that I'm laughing that the game actually had some pretty good ideas, but it didn't deliver. I actually started to do a Let's Play series um, and I only had three episodes. Why? because my third city didn't load it. Second, always online. Like It's not like a huge problem for me to always be online because I'm always online anyway. However, I don't want to depend on other people. When you're playing SimCity, you are a god, right? You can do whatever you want in that city. I don't want to depend on other gods taking care of their cities. Like, dude, sell me power. You're supposed to sell me power. Oh my god, this dude hasn't logged in in two weeks. Oh my god, what the hell is going on? You see, my fun is being ruined. Not only that, but somehow they didn't even care that the game failed. They still kept with their schedule. They basically released an expansion called Parks something and then they released an expansion about uh, cities of tomorrow, future cities, something like that. We didn't have, we don't want that. We wanted bigger maps, something. Anyway, I, I don't want to talk about this right now. The good news is that uh, like two weeks ago, they announced uh, offline mode and they announced that they will support mods from now on, which is good. I'm curious to see what the hell is going to happen with this game, because as I've said, they had some pretty good ideas there and there, but uh, anyway. <laughs> My biggest surprise of 2013 is actually Papers, Please. Who thought that a game where you play the role of an immigration officer can be that fun? In case you haven't heard about the game, it's a game where you, people come to your booth and you need to check their paper, you need to check their name, their expiration date, their passport, their ID, other stuff like that, and then you basically deny or approve their entry to the country. The whole game takes place in a fictional Eastern Europe, uh, communist Eastern Europe country. And it's actually really interesting on how I'm paying attention or not to miss anything because I can't afford to miss stuff and get fined because I need to go home and take care of a family. So it's really adding uh, this aspect of you taking care of the family, trying to manage your money, buying food for your family, and then the puzzle aspects of the game where you are going to try to be as fast as possible, approving or denying people. And again, with that whole story, the game has about 20 different endings, which really makes you want to play the game and uh, the game again and play the game again and see exactly what's going to happen. So this is the main, the main reason why you see this game, Papers, Please, on so many top ten lists uh, last year because it's a very unique game. There are five games that I regret buying last year. The first one, well the games are in no particular order, but the first one is Payday 2. The game is not bad, the game is actually really really fun and I knew that I will not have to who to play the game with, but I still bought it. I went to Greenman Gaming, I saw a big banner, I saw with their discount coupon, I like okay this isn't really that expensive, like $30, hmm. Hmm, okay, let's buy it. And I played it for like one hour. And that's it. I knew from that one hour that I will not have friends to play this, uh, this game with. Because it's a game that it's really fun when you play it with friends. The second game, it's Company of Heroes 2. Oh my, how, how can you release a game like that in 2013? Not only that the game is very unoptimized and it works like shit, but the campaign is incredible cheesy, so cheesy, unbelievable cheesy. The game reminded me of Enemy at the Gates, a pretty cheesy movie. 
with Jude Law and I mean Russian uh, about the movie Russian characters played by English actors with English accents yeah that works okay let's say you don't buy the game for the campaign there are a lot of games that I buy to play multiplayer the game does not have a lobby does not have a chat they don't have a ladder and they don't have dedicated servers in 2013 and it's a shame because the mechanic for Company of Heroes 2, it's amazing. I love how you have the whole map and the whole map is split into different sectors and you basically conquer the different sectors and it's not like Starcraft or Warcraft where you, where you gather resources and then you attack. You immediately, from minute one, you move out on the map trying to cap up points. So, so, so sad. The third game is Swords of the Stars, The Pit. I saw the game on streamers, it's uh, like a roguelike something game. I actually made the first look and it's like a really first impression when I went into that game and haven't played it ever since. I believe it, I played it for 30 or 40 minutes. And the thing with the game is that I went to their website, I saw that they had a Kickstarter, I said okay fine, a successful Kickstarter. Uh, I watched on their website and I see the uh, full game should be released in November. I was like, oh, okay, it's April. It, it was April or May, something like that. I was like, okay, the game will be released in November. They will basically improve the game. I didn't like the game too much. Okay, let's buy it, full price, 10 euros. And then the game sucked. I didn't find it fun. The animations were a bit sloppy. I, I don't want to go into details. And then it turns out that on their website, they meant November last year, in 2012. So the game was already out, only that they didn't bother to update their fucking website for like four or five months. And so I said, fuck you, fuck off. Sort of the start of the pit, eh, down, for me at least. If you enjoyed it, that's good. But for me, that was like a huge disappointment. The four game, ah, ah. And, they, and they, when I bought it, I thought that I was smart. I'm not going to fall into the Peter Molyneux trap. Because I'm smart, I don't believe his lies, I don't believe whatever he's saying. But I still bought Godus. It was like 10 euros or something. Not much in a way, but I prefer to give those 10 euros to someone else. I still have a little bit of faith because the game is still in early access and it can improve. Maybe it can change 360, or well not 300, 180 degrees. And then the game will work better and it might be fun, I don't know. But the game right now, it's a fucking click fest. All you do is click. You have different layers of ground and all you do is click 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 oh my god you got a new card click 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 and after 30 minutes of clicking i got bored turns out it's a game for fucking ipad and android devices why am i playing this on pc i'm not saying that the the game is bad for being on pc and on mobile devices but go on click 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 and I actually try it Let, let's see if i can get a refund you cannot get a refund on early access games why because the developer will uh, improve the game and I said okay fine are you going to give me a refund when the game is going to come out no oh, okay so guys be careful when you are going to buy early access games and for Godus for me it's getting a, a down maybe it's going to be improved maybe not but it's a fucking click fest and the fifth game that I regret buying the last year was Rome Total War 2 yeah, another game that was heavily unoptimized when it came out. Whenever I was ending a turn, it took me one minute for everyone to finish their turn, and I have a pretty good PC. Second, I knew that I don't really enjoy this kind of games. Some people like to go into battles and manage the battles. I'm a more of a guy that likes to look at overall, like a civilization guy. So I look at overall, the map overall. But I said, okay, let's try the game, let's buy it. And I regret the decision. <laughs> So the best games of 2013 are not really my top. These are the games that I played in 2013 and they were fun. And the first game that I'm going to start with is not a game that came out in 2013, but I played it I played it last season and that's Heavy Rain. You have to play Heavy Rain. I actually made a review without any recording of the gameplay because I don't own a PlayStation 3. It was one of the games that I loaned with the PlayStation 3 and I played and it was amazing. So the main reason why I loaned a PlayStation 3 from a friend is because of The Last of Us and it's one of my favorite games all time. And I'm saying that without being hyped. Since I don't own a PlayStation 3, I didn't actually care about the PlayStation 3 games at all. So the hype didn't build it up in me. But I, someone told me that play, uh, The Last of Us is a really good game. I said, okay, let's try it out. I loaned the PlayStation 3 and i had like an Im 
incredible fun with this game. It was it's actually the single game that after I finished The Last of Us, I wanted to start it again and see those beautiful environments again. I wanted to see exactly things that I missed. But the main thing that I loved about this game is the fact that the story is human. If you finish the game, you will know what I mean. I don't want to spoil you, so I will not go into details. Second, it's a game where you are not really encouraged to kill. You want to explore other rooms in order because you might find munition, which is very useful, but you don't really want to because you might encounter clickers and you might die. When you, whenever you kill something, you don't get experience points. So there is no point for you to go where you shouldn't go. And this really created some uh, different kind of tension that I haven't felt in a game before. The third game that I enjoyed a lot last year, like a lot, is Rayman Legends. And I, it's, one of, it's actually on the list of uh, upcoming games of 2013 that, I'm making, that are making Pet excited. And uh, when I made that video, the Rayman Legends supposed to be Wii U exclusive, but it's not anymore. And that made me very, very happy. I actually bought it and I played it on uh, Steam with my controller and that worked simply fabulous. And I love what they did with Rayman Legend. It's feeling so much better and the level design is so much better than the Rayman Origins, which I played on my Xbox. And the good thing is that they actually have Rayman Origins. They have a segment of levels uh, called Back to Origins, where you are going to be able to play Rayman Origin uh, levels. And you can see a huge difference between the level design uh, from Rayman Origins and Rayman Legends. In Rayman Legends, it's somehow more alert, more fun, more fast, and checkpoints uh, more often, while uh, Origin was a bit slow paced and you made a mistake, the checkpoint was a pretty far behind and you need to do that thing again. But it's still a very, very, very fun game and you should actually play it and uh, it actually, it's actually working with f up to four guys. I'm not sure how that works, but in two guys it's amazing. Another game that I enjoyed and I have been waiting for this game for ages is Monaco. What's yours is mine. And this is a game, if you look at this game, you'll be like, hey, a stealth game. Well, it's not really a stealth game. Come on. You are, you are looking at the gameplay. What is this reminding you of? You have a character that's eating gold and he, have, he has to move fast, right? It's, it's like an upgraded version of Pac-Man, right? Not only that, but you are, you, you are able to play this with other people and uh, each of you have different roles. Uh, some, of you, some of you might play with the lock uh, picker and uh, that guy actually l picks lock uh, much faster. You, someone else might play with the hacker which has the ability to hack into stuff and shoot down different kind of things. Uh, some people might play with the cleaner uh, who's able to knock out uh, different kind of uh, characters on the map so you can advance faster sneaking around. Uh, the game also came out with uh, support for uh, Steam uh, Workshop, so you are able to actually download maps made by the community, which really adds a lot to the game. I personally played the game by myself, and it was still a fun game, so I really recommend you to get that game. I actually have an extra copy that I'm going to give out uh, on my website this year, so go to gamerpad.com slash giveaway. And another game that I enjoyed a lot this year was actually Grand Theft Auto V. Like, uh, duh. Simply, I love what I did with the game. Huge improvement over Grand Theft Auto 4, especially story-wise. You can go, from the first minute the whole city is unlocked, you can go move around. The, the map is huge and I love the, this idea with uh, three characters. I remember playing the game for like six hours and I was like, dude, I still haven't met Trevor. I wonder how Trevor is like, dude, I'm, I'm enjoying this game and I still haven't met Trevor. And then you met Trevor and it's amazing and the story unfolds beautifully and the, the multiplayer is also fun. Hopefully they are going to release it on the PC because I want to buy it on the PC and I want to put the details at maximum so I can see the whole world pretty pretty in a pretty good, a pretty good environment. So uh, as you, I actually have this map here. This is the map uh, from Gunter Out of 5. I sometimes like to look at it. Anyway, another game that I enjoyed a lot is actually State of Decay and I made a review for the Xbox version then I made a review for the DLC that came out in November uh, called Breakdown and Breakdown actually adds uh, the sandbox mode which is really amazing. This game actually made me feel part of a community. Your purpose was not to kill zombies, your purpose was to form that community and survive. And I haven't gotten that, you actually, you actually farm attachment to your characters and if your character dies 
it dies. You, you can start to play with others from your community, but you still feel the loss. Like this was one of my best guys. His level was pretty high. Oh my God, I can't believe that I lost it. Amazing game, you need to try it out. Another game that I enjoyed is actually Gone Home. And the reason why I enjoyed it is because for once I'm open-minded. Second, I knew kind of what to expect. So I took two hours free. I put my headsets on and I enjoyed the game. I enjoyed the experience. I loved how the story is being told to you. It's a game about a story that's forming in your head. And you advance to it and you're like, oh my God, what the hell is happening? And it's another another story that's human. It's not super realistic like some other game. It's also not a horror game. The disadvantage of Gone Home was that it was fairly expensive, like 20 euros for a two hours game that has no replayability. Not every game has to, don't get me wrong, not every game has to have replayability, but it's pretty, exp pretty expensive for a two hours experience. But if you see the game at a sale, buy it, take two hours off, no kids, no girlfriend, nothing, put your headset on and enjoy the ride. And you really need to have be calm and see what the game gets you. Now, some of you might actually know, but one of my favorite games all time is the, are the Civilization series. And when Civilization V came out in 2010, I actually, I actually got the collector's edition. I, I don't really like the box, how it is. And the contents weren't that great, but because I love the game, I actually bought the collector's edition. But when Civilization V came out, you could really see how many things the game is missing because they let them there for the expansion. Then the first expansion came out and they added uh, religion and they added it pretty nicely. But it was more okay. But then Brave New World came out and they added, uh, let me see if I remember correctly, they added trade routes, which is something that you really do early on and later. And it really adds another mechanic to the game. You are trying to see who, where are you going to trade with what city are you going to trade from what city are you going to trade and stuff like that which really adds something to the game second for me at least i really enjoyed the exploration parts of civilizations series i think i started at least 1000 games but i only finished like what 10 percent of those because i really enjoyed the exploration part so the thing is that after some time when you have the whole planet explored there isn't much exploration to do. It's you are going to go for the cultural victory. You are going to rush for different kind of buildings. You are going to maybe start a war, you know, stuff like that. So they added archaeology, which is something that starts mid to late game. It's something that really adds to the game. You are going to create archaeologists and you are going to go to different places on the map where battles happen. So if you, I don't know, when the game started in turn 10 you fought a barbarian later in the game you might actually find on that spot some artifact that you will be able to get home to your cities and bring tourists to your civilization which is another thing added in civilization 5 brave new world tourists so i really love what they did with civilization 5 it feels more complete a uh, more complete game and i'm curious if they have something else prepared for us or this was it for the civilization 5 series Another game that I enjoyed, and I didn't actually expect it to enjoy it, was Tomb Raider. I was like, I don't want to play with hysterical woman. But actually, a couple of friends uh, recommended the game, and I really enjoyed it. It's not like a perfect game. I believe I got, uh, I gave the game like 8.5 <laughs> when I was still using ratings. And it's a game that I can really say to other people, hey, play Tomb Raider. You are going to play a female version of Chuck Norris, but that's another thing. <laughs> the game uh, gets a bit supernatural and uh, it really will make you wonder what the hell is going on. And they are doing a pretty fine job with that. So these are the games that I enjoyed the most in 2013, like, like the best games. <laughs> now let's talk about the games that kept me going to the whole year. The games that I played the most, right? And uh, it's not really surprising, but the game that I played the most last year is actually Dota 2. And according to Steam, I have about 1080 hours. Some of those hours are uh, watching other tournaments, but I was mainly playing the game. And uh, again, I enjoyed the game. I finally found some uh, friends, some good people who actually know how to play and they inv are invi inviting me to their party and we are a full five-man party. And it's so much different to play the game with people you know and not just pub games where people do whatever they want. 
The second game is actually Football Manager 2013, uh, which I played for 352 hours. Um, I played the uh, full series with Wolves. I actually played it for 10 seasons and actually everything is documented in my uh, show called uh, Pet Plays Football Manager 2013 with Wolves. Another game that I played a lot is Crusader Kings 2. It's not a game that came out uh, last year. There were a couple of good expansions that came last year. But Crusader Kings 2, it's amazing and I'm very happy that I managed to learn the game and play it. And I actually created a pretty long tutorial. I wanted to create a shorter tutorial. However, people seem to enjoy it. So if you want to learn Crusader Kings 2, don't forget to check out my review tutorial and first look all into one video. Another game that I played for 53 hours is actually Euro Truck Simulator 2. That is the game that actually made me purchase not one, but two steering wheels. I was like, I don't need the expensive steering wheel and I bought a fucking piece of crap genius steering wheel for like $30. I regret the decision and it was kind of unplayable. So I actually spent like $150 on a Logitech Driving Force GT, which I actually enjoy uh, playing with it because right now I'm actually playing a lot of racing games. I'm going to do some videos later. But Euro Truck Simulator 2 is something uh, pretty, pretty special. Why? So some people actually ask me, why, why do you play Euro Truck Simulator 2? Why, why do you enjoy driving a truck and getting cargo from one point to another? Well, it's a game that relaxes you. I put music and I just drive. And I signal and I pass another car and I just drive. And I turn left and I turn right and I just drive. And I was driving and I was feeling relaxed. And then I noticed that, hey, I'm, I'm actually thinking about other stuff, other good stuff. I'm not focused on the game, like, oh my god, I need to do that. I was simply relaxed. So if you want to relax you and you like video games, buy Aero Truck Simulator, buy a steering wheel. It's really recommended to buy a steering wheel with 900 degrees because when you turn the steering wheel like that, you want it to turn like that in game. My first uh, steering wheel only has 180 uh, degrees. So whenever I was turning it like that, it turned much more in the game, so it was really hard to control the truck. It's really creating stress. So basically, this is uh, the retrospective um, for 2013. Let's go really, really fast over the games that supposed to make me excited last year. Uh, but to be honest, I didn't found last year to be really, really, really exciting. So I'm going to switch to this uh, cover on the new website to have a look at how I was looking last year. This is, this is me last year. Rayman Legends. Yeah, Rayman Legends. So this is basically the Rayman Legends. I already talked about it. Really fun. Salt Park, Stick of Truth. It, he, it got postponed again and it's pretty sad, but the game actually looks really promising. Grand Theft Auto 5 was an amazing game. Star Wars 1313. Let's have a moment of silence for Star Wars 1313 because it got cancelled. Uh. So sad, so sad. Watch Dogs, again, it got postponed. It's supposed to be coming out in quarter one of 2014. Really looking forward to it. Monaco, an amazing game. Legend of Dungeon, uh, I didn't actually find it really that fun. So this is why I haven't covered it. Mugenetic, Mugenics, I'm not sure why it's on the list. It's a game that actually is going to come out this year. And when I wrote this down, we really had no ideas about what this game is going to be about. Mercenary Kings is available in early access. I didn't have money to buy it yet, so I didn't actually cover it at all. The Cave. It was it was one of the first games that actually came out last year that I was excited about. But then I didn't have time to play it. Six months passed. I said, okay, let's. Let, I'm going to play The Cave. But then I didn't actually want to play it because it's a puzzle game. I, I wasn't in the mood for puzzle games. Double Fine Adventure is actually Broken Age that came out uh, right now and it's uh, looking pretty fun and hopefully after finishing this video I'm going to go in and play it. Battlefield 4 had a couple of problems uh, at launch but I'm enjoying it a lot. The Witness, it's going to be a PlayStation 4 exclusive. It didn't came out last year, of course. Gunpoint, I was a bit excited about the game but I had no money to buy it so I just skipped it. Carmageddon Reincarnation didn't came out last year. Wasteland 2 didn't came out last year. Grim Dawn is actually available on early access. It's looking pretty good. No money right now to buy it. Hopefully when the game will be out I will cover it. 
Divinity Original Sin. Again, it's a game that didn't came out last uh, last. Uh, it's a game that didn't came out last year. But I actually have early access right now. I just got early access uh, two days ago. Haven't had time to play it, unfortunately. Sim City, huge disappointment. Prison Architect, still in Alpha. Football Manager 2014, pretty fun, but I do feel that they need to change things up a bit because they have the same formula for years. And I feel that they need to spice things up a bit. StarCraft 2 Heart of the Swarm was, was okay. I kind of got bored of StarCraft 2 in general. Really boring to watch even on pro games uh sorry guys but uh, i will try maybe to cast it maybe i will cast some dota 2 company of heroes 2 sucks project godus sucks planetary annihilation annihilation i'm really looking forward to this one it's still available on early access has no money for it full tail early access i got it it's still in development and then dota 2 which actually came out last year and it's a really really fun game so this is it oh my god such long video such long video i, I plan to make this video much shorter but hopefully you enjoy this and uh, hopefully tell me what are the games that you played the most uh, last uh, year don't forget to write in the comments below don't forget to check gamerpad.com slash giveaway just go to gamerpad you have a banner here and just um, join the giveaway and you are uh, you are going to have chances to win uh, Steam games, Dota 2 items, and other stuff. So again, guys, thank you for watching this. See you soon. Goodbye.